Welcome to the Ninja Sport UK podcast. This special limited edition series has been brought to you in conjunction with UK OCR and the UK OSF. Ninja Sport UK is a collection of some of the most recognizable and successful ninja athletes to ever have appeared on Ninja Warrior UK, as well as some of the most diehard fans and supporters of the sport. It's our mission to see ninja sports recognized as an official sport in a future Olympic Games. So what's this podcast about? Well, it's a celebration of the return to ITV and ITV Hub of Ninja Warrior UK Race for Glory. In this series, we'll talk to those athletes lucky enough to get their chance, not just to stand on the start line of the course, but to race other athletes and even the team of professional pro ninjas. So sit back and relax as we find out how they trained, what it was like on set, and just how amazing Ninja Warrior Race for Glory really is. I'm your host, Matt Gopal. Enjoy the show. Good afternoon. Welcome, everyone, to the Ninja Sport UK podcast. This is episode two of the limited edition series celebrating the return to screens of Ninja Warrior UK. This time, it's the race for glory. And what a fantastic first episode, both on TV and for the podcast. So how could we not continue? And as you can see on your screens already, I've really ramped it up this week. We've gone from four guests to five. Not only do we have four of the contestants that made this week episode absolutely astonishing and we will be hearing all about their runs but we are also joined as you can well see by one of the pro elite ninja teams so it's fantastic to have Ruel with us we're gonna get some insight on why we've got elite ninjas where did they come from and how do they cope with the pressure as well however without further ado it would be really remiss of me not to introduce who i have with me so we have emma smith we have dr ninja uk andy we have uh shelly we have retro dino dean and we have uh ruel so at home give them a round of applause i am delighted i've met some of you so many times before it's untrue um but i'm going to get you to introduce yourselves briefly so i'm going to start with you emma tell me a little bit about you what's the day job what's the background why ninja um, and do you train specifically for it or are you like me and just give it a go? Hey, yeah, so I'm Emma. I'm a firefighter from Andover. That's my full time job. Um, all in my spare time, I just like to do a lot of body weight, calisthenics, um, obstacle races, um, anything on like a bar, um, just yeah, anything where I'm using my arms um, and just train at work as well, as well as being training um, outside of work too. Wow, are you not permanently exhausted though? Yeah, I definitely like my naps. <laughs> 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 yeah, I, I am not surprised. That's amazing. Wow, fantastic. Now, I know this was not your first time on the show because that's where we met. So um, you came back. W was it the new <laughs> format or was it just the fact that it had come back that you were so excited you had to apply? How did it happen this time round? Uh, so it was a little bit, I, I applied a little bit later this time. I wasn't sure if I was going to do it this time again. But I thought, you know what? I'm going to sort of reignite the phone. I'm going to just put it in and see what happens. And when I had the phone call, I was... I just thought, oh, oh God, this is happening. I've got, I've got to start training <laughs> like more specifically for Ninja. Um, yeah, yeah, I, I, yeah, absolutely was ecstatic when oh, I had the phone call. It's amazing. Yeah. And I'm going to talk to you about the fantastic flame covered costume later on. But Emma, so nice to meet you. And Thanks. I'm going to jump straight on to Andy. So Andy, bear with me a minute. Talk to me uh, about your experience because your runs were fantastic. Nice to meet you. So obviously you're a doctor of what? Where, when, tell me all about you. Oh, thank you. So I am an emergency medicine consultant. So I do A&E, uh, I do that in Warsaw. Um, now, in terms of how on earth did I get into Ninja? So I, I've got a five-year-old son called Ewan and I, you know, I was in the living room, I was just walking past the TV and he's, he's watching Ninja Warrior. He's watching you know, the old Japanese Sasuke version. And uh, I, I suddenly got hooked and we were watching it for a couple of hours. I was like, I need to do this. This looks awesome. So, you know, we go down to the park and we start making, uh, you know, obstacle courses. We've got this fantastic one in the, uh, in the village. We call it the arm melter. And it is in, in terms of a, you know, like a cliffhanger, it's utterly filthy. And I'm, 
I'm competing against a child who weighs less than 20 kilograms. So it's, I, I just feel he has an unfair advantage on me. So we end up, the two of us, we do a lot of Ninja Warrior. We do a lot of climbing together as well. Okay. Um, and I, in between working, I do a lot of uh, like body weight exercise as well. Um, you see my pull up bar in the background as well. Yeah, yeah. Essentially, yeah. Be, working and being a dad, I just have to fit in exercise wherever I can. Yeah, absolutely. Snatch it where you can. So, um, was it your son that really made you think, I've got to apply to this? And was he just ridiculously excited when he found out you were actually going to be on the show? Yeah, I mean, we, we'd be going to the ninja parks for, for quite a while. And then, and then obviously, Ninja Warrior came up and I was like, I have to do this. This is going to be fantastic. And it was really good because he got to come into the audience. He got to see, he got to see me comp compete. It was, it was oh. brilliant. Oh, that's but, I mean, fantastic. But, but I tell you, all he can say afterwards is, when do I get to do it? <laughs> it's like, how old do you have to be? <laughs> well, 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 we'll talk to him probably about that and find out about starting them young because there's some background on that. But Andy, nice to meet you. Let's go. Let's shoot straight over to Shelley. Shelley, um, let me say hello to you. Your run was fantastic as well. I really enjoyed it on Saturday. But tell me a bit more about you. Who, why, where, when, and how come Ninja? Uh, so... I'm Shelley, originally from Southport, but I do actually live down in Swindon now. Um, okay. I'm an auditor by day, uh, so typically not even considered to be the kind of people who even go outside, let alone do sports. <laughs> um, you know, standard desk job, nine yeah. to five. Um, and I got into Ninja, I guess, actually, funnily enough, pretty much two years to the day was the first time I stepped into stepped foot in a ninja gym and I went to one of the adventure parks in Gloucester when they were doing a time trial and I actually right. met Dino and set a time in this sort of short course UK OSF day um, against Dean I think he was about seven times faster than I was through this course um, and I kind of got hooked um, wow. and I train I train at a gym in Swindon now um, true function I can drop them yeah. in there yeah no um, well predominantly for obstacle course racing so some of the big ninja stuff still eludes me um especially right. being five foot two um yeah okay <laughs> as you can see stood next yeah. to emma on course there was a bit of a difference um but yeah, yeah it's been it's been a journey these past two years yeah you know what funny enough we we had angelique on who i think is about the same height as you last week and she said exactly the same thing <laughs> it was all okay until she stood up certain things and went oh that's a really long way away so, <laughs> yeah <laughs> leap of faith <laughs> leap of, i love it wow you've got to take a leap so nice to meet you i will speak to you again very soon now i am going to jump on to someone i have known for a very 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 long time dean cheatham is a bit of a legend in the sport You've been around as long as I have known the sport. We've competed together, we've trained together, and you've very kindly got me involved with the openings of the Ninja Warrior parts. But listen, for anyone that doesn't know who you are and where this all began, tell us all about you. Tell us about the background. When have you been on before? And tell us about this year. So just need to check first, how long have you got? Because I could yeah, listen to I know. I was and hours about Ninja. Yeah, go for it. Go for the, the, the quickest no. summary we've got. <laughs> In a nutshell, um, I'm working at Total Ninja now. So I work at a Ninja Warrior Park. I, I coach Ninja as well. Um, as you as you know, as we know each other, matching t-shirts. Yeah. Yes. We're, uh, we're both part of Ninja Sport UK. Um, so we do a lot of events together, um, which is a great way to get on and meet the public. You know, some of the fans that have been watching the show for years, it's good to give something back to those guys as well. Um, from a training point of view, um, things have changed this season. I've been taking up climbing as well um, for the I longest noticed. time. It's always been just ninja and parkour. Um, but I thought grips were kind of one of the main things that if you're going to fall, it's going to be grip and forearm strength. Um, right. So that's really the, the key thing that I changed this season. And, and did it help? I mean, uh, having trained with you before, I would never have said you were shy of grip strength, but did you <laughs> notice a difference? Uh, to be honest, I didn't have time to check. <laughs> it felt like it was that quick, it was over, please. <laughs> you were involved in two incredibly fast races i'll give you that i'll give you that but i have seen some of the stuff online and it does look like you're getting strong so yeah, it does back, i will come back and talk to you shortly but before i do uh, i'm going to keep you there and bring in someone else who again we've known for an absolute age here another legend of the sport but 
Talk about playing a bit of a sly one, sir, because <laughs> Ninja Sport UK as an organisation, we were wildly excited and you're part of the group as well. And we were all talking online. It's coming back. It's great. And then we were talking pro ninjas and we were guessing this person and that person. And then a photo appeared on Instagram of you and a group of other people having dinner and everyone went, oh, you sly fox. So come on. How did it happen? <laughs> I love that introduction. Um, how did it happen? Uh, to be honest, um, I think for me, I kind of, I love the idea of being the elite ninja. Um, so as soon as I saw the role come available, I kind of just spoke to people that I knew within the show um, and kind of put myself forward for that role straight away. Um, right. Hadn't really even started training for ninja at all, but I just wanted, I just preferred that role. Um, I quite like, from my ultimate tag background um, and other things I've done, I quite like the the role of just chasing people anyway. So it's just, you know, it's a no brainer for me. And, and was there a sense of, you knew you were probably, not not even maybe, but probably gonna be up against someone that you knew, you've probably trained with, you respect. How did that sit with you? Or were you excited about that? Cause come on, we're gonna to talk to the pair of you shortly, but <laughs> I mean, wow. Um, I, yeah, I loved it. I lo I, yeah, that part of it was, um, it was great. I, you know, I think with Ninja, it's one of those things, it's like, we're all, we're all trying to beat a course, but it's also we've all got we've all got to beat each other as well. So it, it was all part of it. I, I loved it. I, I love racing you guys and chasing you guys down. Um, yeah. To be honest, if I'm honest with you, probably the main reason I didn't really feel like I had it. I feel like I was probably a bit too old to be winning the show. So I didn't really feel like I was going to be able to win it as such. So I right. felt like let's just go in and just be a you know, just be an elite ninja and just play it that way instead <laughs> well I, I see i have a theory about this and i'll talk to you about that later on but it's so so good to have you here and dean as well i'm going to bring everyone back on screen now so, so nobody move and um, folks the thing about this show is this this brand new format has really really changed things um for me i found it incredibly exciting mm. watching the first two episodes it's it's added a new dimension, but but Shelley and Andy, it was your first experience of this, so I'm really keen to, to bring you both in and talk to you. First of all, had you watched previous series? And second of all, given the choice, would you still prefer this new race format, or would you have liked the opportunity maybe to have gone just you versus the course? So I'm gonna bring you both on screen so you can, you can answer this. Andy, how about you? Oh, th this is a tough one, really. So I'd say for me running the course, I'd have loved to take my time a little bit and uh, enjoy the experience, really suss out the obstacles. Mm. Um, don't get me wrong, it was so stressful being up there doing the race, but um, right. in terms of you know making exciting viewing, the, the race was awesome. I think when I watched, oh, it, yeah. watched it back, I was like, I can see why they did that. That was, that was brilliant. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, certainly being up there the first time and knowing you have to beat someone, it, 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 you get you get all these different uh, questions in your head, like you know, shall I shall I go on the first swing, or shall I shall I take this chance, or shall yeah. I just go that a little bit faster? Yeah, and, you know, we're all competitive people, so we all end up, you know, doing maybe going a little bit quicker than perhaps we should do. Now, I will say this: uh, I, I think it was on the uh, the second or third obstacle for you. There's a photo I found online as well. You seem to have an ape index that's either inordinately large or the photo is taken from a fantastic angle because you're spanning between two grips and your arms just look like they're outstretching the guy you were up against by about a foot. I, I mean, I, are you tall? <laughs> Do you have a big ape index or is that just really interesting photography? Because the pitch is astonishing. I'll try and find it and drop it in if this goes out on YouTube. Oh. Hey, you know, all I can say is it's good to know that I'm looking good up there, but... Um... Oh, yeah. Well, you know, you had Rochelle's heart fluttering. I can safely say that, as I'm sure you noticed. <laughs> she does like a doctor, and she did say that. And Shelley, so how about you? First time on course, and suddenly you're racing head-to-head. -head. Um, and I know you say you've done OCR, so you're used to being in a race scenario, but how did it feel when, when you're up there, you walk down those steps, and then you hear those beeps? Uh, I guess, so yeah, racing head to head, going off on a start line with a group of people is something that I'm, I'm used to, yeah. um, tend to try and run my own race, sort of regardless, um, yeah. but you do find that like you are spurred on by having someone next to you, so you might be like having to make bolder decisions than 
normally you would. I mean, I right. guess we all saw on my race, though, that that didn't always happen. Um, you know, I, di- I didn't do the leap straight away. Um, no, maybe no. if I had, I'd have, you know, I'd have been swimming, but, you know, it sort of played no. it into my own. And You raise an interesting question there, so I'm going to ask you both this, and you can both think about it. Having looked back at your runs, because I, I, I know that feeling of when you think, should I have gone, what, what if? Have you replayed it? several times or hundreds of times since thinking if i'd done that would it have would it have been different or have you just gone it was an amazing experience how about you shelly uh i've watched it about a hundred times uh, <laughs> <laughs> um i just think so my first thing was honestly don't come off on the shrinking steps because at this point you know it's that first obstacle that you can make a mistake yeah. on i'm just like okay we've got past that one and then visibly i think you can see me literally after each obstacle i'm ticking them off in my head yeah. and i'm like okay we've got one more done we've got one yeah. more done and then it gets to the point obviously as you know if you've watched it that yeah it's i don't know how much i'm allowed to say yeah, no, I'm we, assume... this goes out after it's aired to so i assume people have seen it, it. Yeah, no yeah, spoilers yeah. um no, no spoilers you're fine but literally to get us both at the wall at pretty much the same point and for myself like having never been up a walk ball before um yeah the first time ever i put over a walk wall was on the show uh, oh, wow. <laughs> yeah um thank you i've also been dealing with an ankle injury which is why i wasn't able to train it in the run up oh, to the show wow. so literally um i Ouch. had the best possible outcome i could have dreamed of for that day i love it it was yeah it felt incredible going against emma was just yeah incredible as well as well the, yeah <laughs> it was a great there were some great moments from your from your run you know the camaraderie at the start but i'll talk to you both about that in a minute andy talk to me about your first run so so your your, your heat if you will did you have strategy did you surprise yourself or were you were you really that confident? Because you did look supremely calm, I have to admit. Oh, thanks. You know, I think that comes from doing emergency medicine. You have to remain calm on the outside. Yeah. You're screaming on the inside, obviously. But, uh, and, yeah. and, and, you know, it's the same feeling. Like, you're just staring down at those shrinking steps going, don't fall on the shrinking steps. Don't yeah. fall on the shrinking steps. Yeah, nobody um, wants to do that one. No. Um, beyond that, I just... I thought it was a fantastic experience. I, I always think that, you know, if we ever got more than one chance to run this, you know, how much quicker you could be if you knew what you could reach, you know, with the first mm. swing or, you know, or when you needed to take a, swe- a second yeah. swing on things or when you didn't need to dive off for like a, uh, you know, a, a ball bridge or something like yeah. that, you know, th- yeah. those sort of yeah. lessons you learn. <laughs> hey, they're a horrible obstacle. Well, listen, it was really good. I'm going to, Andy, I'm going to, I'm going to drop you out and bring uh, Emma in. I've got a question for Shelley and I want to keep uh, Emma here, uh, Elliot, Emma and Shelley rather. So bear with me. <laughs> don't do that. Don't do that. Listen, the three of you, the two of you here, your race, was phenomenal TV. Like I said, the camaraderie, there was a big smile. I think there's a big hug at the start. You looked like you'd had words before, you know, be backstage even about let's just go out and enjoy this. But it, it was so close. Now, Emma, you've been there before. You've got that experience on course. How yeah. was it for you this time, A, having someone next to you, and B, did it help you? Because you look so... I don't know, you, you were bursting with smiles. That's the only way I could describe it. You looked like you were just having fun. Yeah, I am. Um, so as soon as I sat, we, got, we still got picked out with Shelley, we sort of went and sat with each other and were speaking for ages and got on really well. So we already right. had built up this like relationship backstage of like just a bit like really similar characters, got on really right. well. So when it came to actually having to race each other, I'm, I'm so soppy as well. I'm, I am competitive because we got to know each other my like evil streak had gone and i was just like i just want both of us to get up that wall i was even yeah. contemplating thinking what if we both get up there at the same time and hit the buzzers at <laughs> the same time like is that a loophole <laughs> like i was trying to figure out like a way of so yeah i was just i was just trying to enjoy it i wanted to encourage shelly like as much oh, as possible as well what does both brilliant. just enjoy it and have good fun yeah it was it was fantastic so i wanted you both on screen to say thank you for making some fantastic tv on that one because um you couldn't have planned that race better it looked great but talking of epic races folks i'm gonna i'm gonna just drop you out a minute and bring dean and ruel back in but dean you got to race in your heat an absolute as you put it a legend and a hero of yours from the parkour world okay sebastian fukan i mean anyone that knows anything about 
parkour, free running, or even ninja, almost certainly knows his name. Now, I know you're a very cool guy, I know you're very, very focused, but how did you feel when you knew it was you and him? Were you excited or was there a little bit of nerves? Oh, yeah, absolutely elated. Um, I spoke to Jamie after from, from casting. Right. And he was saying they wish they had a camera on me for that experience. So literally five minutes before we all sat down to find out who we we're going to be racing against, Seb comes walking in. So I go charging over to Seb and it's like, oh, Seb, nice, big hug. So glad that you're on the show. Can't wait to da da da. We'll see yeah. you in the finals. This, and they're having a chat. You know, then when we sit down, we go through the names and literally the first name to come out of the hat. So at first we've got Sebastian Foucault and the whole room just went silent. And it's like, <laughs> and he's going to be up against Retro Dino. And the whole place just erupted. It was like, oh, oh. No. You know, I looked over at Seven and said, can I take that hug back? <laughs> a big hug, fist pump and said, you know what? All we're going to do, we're the first, literally the first ones to run. We're going to put on a f performance. If we go out, we go out in style. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. Race like we wanted. We were both hungry for it. And I think that was what spurred us on to get those fast times through there. Oh, I mean, it was such an epic race. Now, hold on. I, I, I've got to bring Ruel in here a minute. Um, what I don't know, this is a bit of behind the scenes. Do you, as the pro elites, know the order first? Did you know who was up against or is it all in that moment? And then do you do you have a monitor? Are you watching the, the heats as well? So are you getting a bit of sort of form, should we say, and a bit of insider knowledge? Uh, not as much as you might think. Um, we did know... Uh, did we know... I think we did know, but not that much before you guys, I suppose. But we did kind of know who was racing who. Right. Um, maybe sort of, maybe it's a night before, maybe just early or was there oh, okay. earlier in the day. So not not from, yeah, it's kind of last minute, um, like for that, those orders. Yeah. Um, I didn't, obviously, you only look at so many people because everyone's there. You're not, you know, you don't have a clue who's racing who at that point, And you, you just... I have no idea, but, you know, didn't actually know uh, Dean was racing in Fukin, um, but it was, a, it, was a, it was a quality race. Uh, obviously, oh. I'm a free running background. Yeah, I know, years. right? Obviously, he's an absolute legend. Um, yeah. And obviously, I've known Dean for ages as well, so I was like, no. So, yeah, I knew one of them was going to go. Honest, I'll be honest with you, my money was on Dean. Um, Fukin is brilliant. He's such a nice guy. But it, Dean had him on the, the grip strength stuff in general. And I think the general ninja stuff, I was confident that, that Dean would win it. But um, I know yeah. Fukum wouldn't let him win it easy. No, I, I didn't see for a minute Seb backing down. But I have to admit, having, having trained at so many of the ninja parts now with you, uh, Dean, and just seeing you get faster and more fluid and more confident, I kind of, I had my suspicions from that point that you you'd probably have it on speed you know on, on raw yeah. obstacle speed however i want to talk to you about your race now i'm going to get the name of this obstacle wrong the the i call it the flying mustache but i don't think it is wing right? nuts, wing nuts yeah. okay is it the wing nuts that twist no oh, um you know the one i mean now uh before the cargo in it yeah before uh, the cargo net. right now yeah we're whisk away whisk away Whisk away, Whisk that's away. the one. Thank you, right. I'm going to bring it, yeah. everyone else on here. Right? So just stay there a minute, guys. What I want to know is this. I have watched both episodes now, and I've noticed something that all the pro elites do that I think only Dino has done as well, which is jump. Literally, it's almost like you slap the handles and then go to the net, whereas most people are seeming to jump, catch, and get caught if it twists. You guys, the elites, that is, seem to have got it dialed in that it can be done in a one hit. Now, have you have you got practice on that? Is that has somebody from a different series said, look, this is the technique? Because it just seems so dialed in for everyone that that's where you're making up time. Apart from, I think on your eyes, because because I don't think Dino really misses on things like that where swinging is involved. So, Ruel, what what's going on there? Is it just knowledge? Is it experience? Um, so a lot of the a lot of the elites have obviously been on other shows. So yeah, Germany, yeah of course. Um, Poland. In fact, the guy um, I raced last week, um, he was he's Poland's number one. Yes, um, yes. So a lot of people right. have experience with all the different obstacles. Um, we did get to use them. Um, I think I had two swings, two goes on that before, but we didn't. So we do get an extra. They sort of made it out like we get to play on these obstacles all day that is not how it works okay right. 
um, from from our kind of point of view, maybe I go into more detail later. But we got to have a go on maybe a few of them that we wasn't sure about, um, right. and then. Um, and then we would choose to kind of to show everyone the, the audience what each obstacle was. We would choose one or two to go along. Um, right. But they didn't want to get. We only had like two outfits, and we didn't. We only had one pair of shoes for most of us. So they didn't want to get us wet. So they didn't want to let us practice. But then in the same breath, they sort of wanted to let us wanted to make sure we get through. And we're like, well, if you want to definitely get us through, we need to have a few goes on these, some of these things right. because we have got a run that extra speed, that extra yeah. two obstacles. So we have got a bit of pressure on us to catch these people up. And you know, you don't want to show where the elite ninja falls in. Hey, yeah. Like I did on the first one. Um, but yeah, I mean, so they do give you, a, they give us a couple, but not nearly as much as people might have actually thought. We don't get to play on them loads. Oh, in okay. actual fact, the day before, obviously the obstacles are you guys' obstacles. So we probably got more play on those obstacles that we never actually got to use because right, okay. we didn't you know the the obstacles that you guys run on against yeah. each other yeah. we did a lot of testing um that was a testing yes. phase so we tested a lot of those obstacles um so the day before that was kind of like we're doing all these obstacle testing for a couple of days but not on any of the obstacles that we're going to use and then the next day it's like right these are the obstacles you're going to use, and uh, you get to use okay. a, check out a couple of them. So yeah. <laughs> so so uh, Andy, I want to talk to you. So you get through your heat, you smashed it, right? It was great, and then you're up against the professional. Now I know you said emergency medicine, call on the outside, screaming on the inside. You did look a tiny bit more nervous when you lined up against the professional. I'll be honest, <laughs> but only for a moment. Only I mean, literally before the beeps. As soon as those beeps went, that kind of steely look came on again and you look like right bring it on i'm off again how was it in your head so in the head again shrinking steps right same plan don't fall on the shrinking steps <laughs> <laughs> it's like yes plan one's worked yeah, yeah. um Boom. do you know in my head for the second race it was let's just try and get through this um rather than let's try and race the ninja i was just i was just going for as quick as i could do on the course right now I, there's certain obstacles I'd never done before, and that includes the, that bridge of balls. I had yeah. no idea how to do that. Um, and I, you know, I, I kind of just thought, you know, if I go as quick as I possibly can, I'll get it over with quicker. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah it looked like the, the last ball, maybe you were a bit too near the front of it and it slid backwards on you. I'm not, I'm not sure because you did. Sort of yeah, that... I mean, I kind of hit it, it with my second. I think it was, yeah, I, I, hit the, I hit it with my heel and it started uh, rotating okay. the thing. So, you know, it's the sort of thing I think if I had two or three goes on, I'd have probably have got down how you're meant to do that. But ne Andy, next year. Exactly. Ne That's what the next year is for, isn't next it? Next year, yeah. right. Now, yeah. Dean, okay, you know you're up against the professional, then you're up against this man here. <laughs> and again, you know, it's not like we haven't got form here. We, you know how each other is. How was it? And, and I, I wasn't quite sure in your post interview what you said happened. Did you leap too high? and go above what you were trying to drop down onto? Was that what, was that what caused you to drop yes. in the end? Yeah, so on the start back, yeah. it, the, there was a jump to the trapeze bar. You'll see in the, in the, the programme, there's some hesitation for me. When we was watching the, the course testers do the course, I think it was Christian Stefano was testing that one for us. He right. jumped from the trapeze bar and he only just got like three fingers on, caught it with one hand, held it, and got himself back on again. So I thought at that point, He's about the similar height to me, and right. if he's struggling to get it, I want to make sure that I'll take my time and stick that landing, make sure I get that bar. So that was my first concern. I think after I caught the bar, I went to go on my first swing to span across. Right. Didn't realise that my uh, ape index isn't long enough to make the distance on it. So I saved myself on one arm, came back, and thought, okay, I'll put more into it. So I think it took two swings. Yeah. Um, put too much power in. I was over the height of the bar, hit my hands on the perspex. You've literally got maybe two or three inches between the bar and the top of the perspex. So you'll see if you slow it down, the left hand hits the perspex, missed the catch and fell in. Ah, oh, no. I guess the, the takeaway from this is, I need to train less. <laughs> <laughs> I can make the catches. <laughs> you know Same what? On season it, five. <laughs> it's, it's ninja, isn't it? It's ifs, buts and maybes though. That's what it is. I, you know, mm. anyone that... It doesn't matter where you get to. If you get to that point where it's the difference between falling in and making it and you fall, we can all, and I've done it for 
five years since I was on now, you go through it hundreds and hundreds of times of what if. But uh, as Andrew just said, hey, that's what season, you know, the next season's for, isn't it? Come back and get some revenge. Shelley, um, are you going to come back? Have you got the fire now? Are you going to be living in true function, nailing all the ninja obstacles? Is is that now the plan? Absolutely. Um, <laughs> yeah. Um, I think for me, it's definitely building that confidence. I think there's right. a lot of it in terms of actually just, do you know what? I managed to conquer things that I never thought I yeah. could do. And I think that's one of the beautiful things about Ninja oh. is that, yeah. That, so I'd like to say I want to learn how to fly. So I think most ninjas will know what that means in terms of taking those big leaps and stuff. I think yeah. I've got a lot of specific ninja rather than OCR training to do. Because I did say that if I could get hold of the rings, and as you'll notice in the race, when I get on the rings, that's actually where I overtake. Yeah, Emma yeah. on that last obstacle. I'm like, if I can grab onto something, You're I'm okay. there. Yeah. It's just the get into it. <laughs> Yeah. sometimes it's a bit of a... hey it is a difference I and mean, we're, we're lucky we're, we're working in partnership with as you know UK OCR and UK OSF for this podcast so we've got lots of folks like you who've maybe come at it from the OCR background and are looking at Ninja and, and you could go oh this looks pretty much the same with less burpees but but it is actually really <laughs> different yeah. Yeah, less Imagine mud. <laughs> yeah, less mud, less burpees. Maybe that, well, that's it. I'd see, I've got one for next season. Burpees instead of water. That's the penalty. Ditch the water and just oh. do burpees if people miss an obstacle. Oh. There you go. I think it might slow the race down. Uh, Emma, this was second time round for you. Yeah. Are we going to go third time round? Of course. Uh, of course. <laughs> I knew there'd be no course. I knew there would. I knew there would. Yeah. And, and how did it feel? You know, you're getting up the wall again. You were... I, I, I don't think I've seen anyone smile as much in a long time. <laughs> I think I nearly fell. There's a mat at the top of the wall. And I, as I jumped up on the mat, I think my feet like nearly came off the mat. So I like jumped my knees. You can see my knees jolt where I was like, oh, my God, I nearly fell over. Um, yeah, because last time I was on it, I didn't get up the wall. I fell no. on like the fourth obstacle. So that was my first time up the wall too. Yeah. So. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it's, it's, awesome. it's such a good feeling, right? It really is. Yeah. So I want to now delve into the pro world. Well, I'm going to bring you on all on your own. I, I want to have a bit of a conversation with you now, okay? So um, it's all right. Don't, don't panic. Don't panic. This is just what's interesting for me is to find out how this all works, okay? So you've got this team. Who put the team together? How long it, or how far in advance was the team put together? And were you able to draw from each other's experience? Because as you say, there's some serious experienced athletes and ninjas in that squad. I would love to tell you that information, but I don't really know much of it. Honestly, oh, really? um, no. Do you know, so I found out who the team were. Um, I think I was one of the first ones on. Um, I imagine Shane was probably the first since he's been working with ATS yeah. for years. Um, yeah. Then I, when I spoke to, I spoke to Martin really early on, like I've known for quite a long time yeah. that I was on it. Um, and then I started to get names of other people that were going to be on. He didn't know about Tim, whether he was going to make it, let him go on the show because he won or whether they're going yeah. to get him on as a pro. Um, but I'd actually reached out to all of the ninjas to do some training together. And, um, well, I just put like a group message um, and I didn't actually get any replies. <laughs> um, but um, I, I think they, uh, and then Shane tried to get, uh, to be honest, we only found out within really weeks of the show that I only found those guys that were on it uh, within weeks wow. before the show. Um, to be fair. So we didn't, I didn't even speak to probably, I think I maybe spoke to Shane. And that was it. Wow. Um, and that was a brief, it wasn't like we trained or anything. I really wanted to get a team together where we trained together and did stuff, but it didn't really happen. Wow. Um, hopefully next year, I know for Joe and Lynn, they'd never yeah. done any ninja before ever. Um, so they've done no ninja warrior background stuff. It's all just their, their job for core. Um, and obviously the rest of the girls, wow. they were like, you know, they've been ninjas for a long, long time. Um, right. and, um, and obviously Tim and Shane and Isaac are all um, in yeah. the ninja world of many years yeah. so yeah <laughs> so no, other than I, that yeah we didn't we train much I, I, that's fascinating me I have to admit I thought they were doing a much more notice but the wonders of TV now here's a question because you, you alluded to this talking about your races and particularly against Dean here right you your position starting two obstacles back being the chaser 
does that give you some sort of a mental advantage do you think because be, you know that the, your contestants or your opponents already got pressure they've created because they know you're chasing them are you are you kind of are you assuming they'll be hesitant or make a mistake um i, I think so i mean if you've watched any of my previous episodes of ninja warrior i was quite a nervous generally i'm quite nervous on the show yeah. um so i know that other people will be nervous um but i think all of us ninjas were probably just as nervous as the contestants we just kind of played it off with part of our character if you like you know mm. that we wasn't we wasn't really you know nervous at all um but as i say a lot of the obstacles for example snapback the first time i touched it was exactly the same time as the first time the person i was racing first touched it so i hadn't used the snapback at all or the wing nuts um i did have the advantage of using the wing nuts when i did um years ago with germany uh, yeah. which was actually harder because you had to use side on yeah, yeah um but yeah i think um it it is it, we still have the same pressure we've got to catch up with you and then yeah. we're, we we have the extra added pressure of the fact that we are supposed to be named the elite so if we yeah. do fall in we look really silly um <laughs> to a degree you know um yeah, yeah. so it, it's really kind of everyone's like we're supposed to be elite why is he falling in but um so we've got to, we have to catch you up and if we don't catch you up we just look you don't it, well you look good either either way as a contestant but as a, as a ninja we kind of have to catch up we don't catch up we fall in we look rubbish you know it's oh, really um, interesting so yeah there is a pressure for us but obviously we try to ramp up the pressure for the contestants so like back we were trying to like kind of get everyone excited backstage and try to yeah, when we're, yeah, yeah, we're, yeah. our pods are next to each other but we can't see each other um oh, and really? they didn't know yeah so the contestants don't know who's racing who um, I actually think, I'm actually now remembering, there was a time, um, Dino, I don't know if you remember this, you, you come up to me and was said to me, um, said something about, like, who do you know who's racing or anything? <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, <laughs> and at that point, I knew. <laughs> oh, I knew, really? I knew I was racing him, but I couldn't say nothing, obviously. <laughs> That oh, happened a couple no. of times to me. People were like, oh, who's going against two? I'm like, I can't tell you. And I'm thinking, yeah, I'm going to be racing you. Oh, <laughs> you're kidding, really? Yeah. Oh, that's awful. I mean, it's funny, but oh, man. Dude, I'm going to ask you a question. Uh, did, you, did you have a hope that you'd get a particular person as a pro? Or but given given the kind of c contestant you are, competitor you are, did you not mind? It didn't matter. No. no? Um, my focus was purely on um, each obstacle. Um, so if anyone saw me backstage, I'd rehearse the whole course from start to finish. So right. I was literally going back and forth, going, okay, I've got um, step, 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 platform to a wheel, swing from the wheel to the... So I'd rehearse everything. So in my mind, it was all about, okay, catch with two hands from here, span this one, match it, hips back, feet up high, drive it through. Yeah. You know, pendulum. So I'm thinking technique all the way through. If the ninja was to catch me, then the ninja catches me. But as long as I do the best I can in that moment of time, that's what matters to me. Yeah. Wow. Well, it didn't matter who I was up against. It was me in the course at that moment in time. Wow. Now, you, you, you touch on training there. So the reason I've got everyone up on screen is because I, I want to touch upon training. Now, um, Shelley, you've mentioned True Function. I know you, you've, uh, you're you a total ninja dean, but there are places like uh, HC Fit up in Liverpool. And uh, there's going to be a little advert for a competition coming up there in uh, November coming up uh, later in this episode. But... We've also now got, and I think Andrew, did you say you've been to Ninja Warrior Parts as well as I think Shelley's mentioned it as well? We've we've got these sites around the country, and as I say, Dean's uh, been very kind enough to you know keep me involved in some of the opening of those. But have you all been by by show of hands initially been to a Ninja Warrior Adventure Park so far? Yay! <laughs> Everyone's been to one. Okay, cards on the table now. And I, I'm going to ask this every episode because I know what my answer is. And I'm going to ask you. I'm going to go around this this virtual room here. Do you think these are a fantastic chance for people to go and just get some sense of what it's like on the obstacles? I know you're not going to get wet. Fo falling in foam balls isn't the same thing. But, but Emma, for you, do you think they just give that that bit of experience? Yeah, about... definitely. Like especially like for smaller, like for, for children as well, like teenagers. Like they're going to be going to those parks, hopefully being inspired and wanting to go on the show when they're old enough. Yeah. So I think it's a really, really good. I, I, yeah, I take my kids to the Southampton one, and they absolutely love it there uh, as okay, much so as I do. 
Oh, yeah, absolutely, right? Absolutely. I mean, they're phenomenal. Uh, and Andy, which one's your local one? Where, where, where have you been? Oh, I don't really have a local one, so I kind of travel to all of them. Uh, there's, we've got True Function. Love yeah. that place um, yeah. with Dion. He's amazing. Just speaking to the guy, you always find out a new way of tackling an obstacle. Yeah. Um, we've got Henry's place uh, up in Liverpool, uh, yeah. HC Fit. I've been there and obviously um, we've been to see Dino as well. Again, yeah. every time I speak to Dino, um, I always learn something new at Total Ninja. Yeah. And I've just built a Ninja obstacle course in my back garden as well. Uh, I have seen. I am incredibly jealous. It looks fantastic. But that says someone's got the bug then because you've built your own course. Come on. It, it was totally for my son. It's not for me at all. Yeah, of course. Yeah. Yeah. There's no, there's, yeah. There's no, no. adult sized obstacles there at all, Andrew. No, no. All, all, all for children, yeah, I believe it. Um, <laughs> Shelley, how about you? Where, so I know you've been to True Function and you've been to the Ninja Warrior parts as well. Uh, yeah, so Gloucester's my local one. It was okay. the first one I ever went to. Um, yeah. I did actually have it since being on the show. People at my work have actually all come with me and like some of them brought their children. Oh, and I mean, really? like getting people up a wall, getting you know some of my co-workers completely sort of out of their comfort zones. Yeah, um, yeah, I've got a few youngsters who can't wait to apply for the show now, and they want to train with me once Ooh. a month. I think we're hoping to do, oh. and yeah, it's, it's really cool. Love that. Uh, and now I'm going to talk to you both here. So Ruel and, and Dean, I know you've both got kids, and come on, I remember the daddy and daughter parkour video that went viral. And Dean, I've seen your kids train, and and my goodness, every time I see them, they just get better and better. So. I know that for you two, as well as everyone else, getting kids involved, getting them excited about this as a sport and parkour is really important. But do you get a real buzz when you go to all the different training facilities, seeing the kids trying and, and wanting to beat things as well? Um, Dean, how about you? So that's the main thing really that keeps me going. Um, with the, the events we do for Ninja Sport, it's all about giving back to those that have been watching it. Yeah. Most of the time it's going to be children, obviously. And um, for me, it's payment in itself to see somebody that's maybe a little bit shy or doesn't have the confidence to go, okay, what we're going to do, forget about completing the obstacle. All we're going to focus on is a jump from here, touch yeah. the bar. Yeah. Okay, break it down into small steps. So you touch yeah. the bar, now we're going to try and jump and catch the bar. Yeah. Can we do one transition, two transitions, three transitions? And as you start to instill that confidence in them and see them shine, yeah. you, you get that spark there and you know that this is something they're going to they're gonna work towards. Oh, and yeah. the parents watching as well, they're watching going, I wish I could do that. You can do. Don't get a wristband. Yeah, yeah <laughs> right. Yeah, absolutely. Because absolutely. So these parks are perfect. Yeah. Um, perfect for families, for younger generations. We've had grandparents with the children. Yeah. Um, and there's kind of a, there's a split between the, uh, the Ninja Warrior parks it's more of like a, it's a commercial experience, yeah. whereas um, like Henry's HC Fitness and Dion's True Function are a training facility. So there's a big yeah. difference between the two. If oh, you yeah. want to learn to become a ninja, those would be your best bets. Yeah, if you yeah, just want absolutely. to try it out and have the experience of almost being on TV, yeah. these branded parks look the part so, oh, yeah. for everyone. And, and now, Ruel, I can't, I can't let you go without mentioning your place as well. So Paramount Parkour has been going how long? Is it over a decade now, 10 years? Yeah, 10 years coming up, um, wow. but I mean, I've been teaching parkour for 15, 16, however many years, I have no idea, um, but I've been doing it for over 20 years, um, so I've got quite a lot of background in yeah. parkour. Um, to me, I, I opened the first parkour gym in the, in the UK, and I think in Europe, um, but um, teaching kids has kind of been a massive thing for me for years. Uh, I think I teach currently around 400 to 500 kids a week. Um, wow. So it's pretty like pretty much what I do. Um, my kids, we have our own channel, which is which actually is my De Costa Dynasty channel. Right, um, yeah. That's kind of my my family thing. We 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 train together. We yeah. we play together, um, and yeah, that's kind of what we do. Um, so for me and the Ninja Park, um, we the Milton Keynes one obviously not long opened up. Uh, my kids absolutely love it there. Um, I've set some records there and I've set the kids have set some challenges there as well, to be fair. So, um, yeah, 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 love it. Absolutely love it. It's like exactly as Dino's saying, though. Um, same with, I have some ninja stuff within my gym. We took a lot of it down, to be fair, because um, it is primarily parkour. But um, we have the salmon ladder, we have like, we actually have a walk wall, wall cliffhanger yeah. and stuff like that. But um, they're the places to train actually for this show. Um, yes. 
the the, the, the play parks are just to inspire others. Um, yes. I would love. I think I think True Function has not True Function. Uh, Dean Dino's one. Um, Total Ninja. Sorry, they seem to have a lot more like, adult ninja training stuff, and that's clearly because Dino works there. Um, whereas a lot of the other parks, I reckon they need like a little space for just actually training. You know, like solid training. Um, yeah. Not just not just your sort of play stuff. But um, yeah. I'd love to see that in all of the parks, to be fair. Yeah, I think, I, I, as Dean used the word, it is a commercial balance, isn't it? And I think what they're doing, I, I did get figures, Dean probably knows how many people have visited since they opened, and I want to say over 200,000, but I know that I'm nowhere near. Um, but it, it, it has done this amazing thing, particularly while the show wasn't on the air, of just keeping people interested, keeping people keen to do this ninja thing and now this show is back a lot of them have parallel courses whether they're the the short courses or you know slightly tougher ones and i think just giving anyone that chance to go out with a family or with a group of mates or work colleagues as you were saying um, shelly and just go come on if you want to know what it was like all right it's not like doing it in front of 3,000 people in a studio audience and and having the presenters sort of commentating on your every uh, movement but it's as good as it's going to get, but you're right. The difference between that and training is, is you know, it, it is a world apart. Um, as I say, Henry's got a competition up on the 6th of November and they're fantastic competitions that he puts on. Um, he's, he's having a male and female winner and all sorts. So it, it is wonderful. So folks, we're nearly at the end of this. And for me, it's fantastic just getting to speak to you all. It, it kind of keeps my passion ignited for, for the show as much as anything. But I'm going to ask you all this question, right? I'm going to go one at a time. You've got one thing that you can say to someone who's sitting on the sofa every weekend, either saying, I think I could, or I wish I had, right? I think I could do that, or I wish I'd done it. What do you say to that person? Shelley, how about you? Um, I guess I've got two things. I guess like the main motivation one would be, you don't know until you try. You, you know, right. people don't look at me and think ninja, you know, it just yeah anyone can have a crack at it and then also i think um something just in terms of obviously the pressure and your mental health awareness crying still trying <laughs> is one you can be terrified but you can do it anyway um yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, i love that thank you yeah that's fantastic uh, andy how about you yeah i think for me you know just I think everyone should give this a go. Give yourself a challenge. It's not a challenge if you know you can do it already. So get out there and give it a go. Yeah, I go with that. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Emma, two times giving it a go. You've obviously got the bug. So what do you say to that person sat on the sofa? Yeah, definitely get up and, and just give it a go. Um, as you can see, like the what's so nice is the ninja community is amazing. Everyone is so supportive. Um, yeah always looking to try and make people better and support each other. So they can always reach out to someone that's either been on the show or one of the elite and like, and they'll give them all the support they need to get on that show or try and apply for the show. So yeah, yeah just, just do it and try it, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Ruel, how about you? You've been at this a long time. You've been on the show in several guises. What, what are you saying to people? Because you must have people saying these things to you all the time, Andy. So what's Literally. your thing? I literally get this every day and I'm always telling people, look, just just get on it. But I, I don't just say just try it um, or just go for it. I like people to train for it. Um, I don't just want people to go, oh, yeah, I'm going to give it a go and just apply and throw their application for me and, and yeah. then willy nearly just turn up to this ninja course. I actually, and I say this to my kids, it's not just the, the taking part, it's the training. That's what yeah. I'm more proud of in my kids. So. Whenever my kids, we're doing something, I would say to them that this, it's not just taking part, it's about the training. I don't care how well you do, it's more about yeah. how well you train to get as yeah. good as you are. Yeah, preparation and giving yourself the best shot, right? Exactly, yeah. Yeah, just yeah. get, do you know what, and most of the fun is had in training, to be honest. The show's oh, only yeah. a small part of it. When you start to actually, like you say, meet the community and actually get into some of these parks, competitions, when you actually train for it, you, you get a love for it and even if you're not on the yeah. show you just love it anyway oh yeah completely yeah 100 percent. and dean you know i think i've heard people call you mr ninja before and, and I, I don't think i could uh, agree more with that you, you've inspired so many people between you and well but what do you say you again you must hear this day in day out but what do you say 
If somebody says shoulda, coulda, what's, what's the yeah. response? The one thing that I hear a lot in the parks, because people are coming down with their friends and families and whatnot, and they, uh, it's usually the parents are like, I'd love to, but I'm too old. And it's always, so how old are you? Oh, I'm, yes. uh, I'm 32, I'm 34. It's like, okay, um, I was 43 in July, just gone, so I'm, I'm rocking it for over 40s. I'm in the best shape of my life, never been yeah. fitter. You know, no intent to slow down anytime soon. No. Um, you know, we do competitions and whatnot, which yeah, again yeah. is another place that if people want to try ninja, I'd say come to the competitions. Yes. You know, the community, yeah, the ninja community will help everybody, whether it's your first competition or if you've done multiple competitions, yeah. um, we'll talk and discuss techniques and tactics. Yeah. When I was on with, um, with Sebastian for my race, the two of us, literally before we went out, was talking techniques. What are you going to yeah. go for? What's your, yeah. you, you know, so we're there to, even though we're competing against each other, we're yeah. all friends, we're all family, we want to help each other at the same time. Yeah, so, absolutely. So, I finally say, you're never too old, give it a try, find someone that's had experience before, or head yeah. to a local park, one of the training facilities, people will be there to help you, Yeah. and you'll enjoy it just as much as we do. Yeah, absolutely, and I think uh, what I'm going to say, you know, with you and I both sat here in these shirts, Ninja Sport UK was set up, uh, and I say at the start of this, <laughs> we are no more than super fans of this of this sport of the show of everything that goes around with it we are all incredibly passionate and more than anything we want everyone to feel like they can give this a go and they can try and they deserve to try so please do follow us across social media look at ninja sport uk nsuk you can find us everywhere all the links will go in the show notes but uh, as several of you have said if you are ever online thinking, how do I start? Where do I start? What do I do? That's what Ninja Sport's for. You can send us a message on any of the platforms, Facebook or Instagram, ask a question and someone will reply and someone will say, come and meet us at, whether it's one of the Ninja Sport parts, one of the training facilities, uh, and we will try and help you and, and, and show you how to go. But for now, uh, folks, to all of you, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for making episode two of this series just utterly phenomenal and, and compelling viewing. And I take my hat off again to everyone at Potato and ITV uh, for, for bringing the show back and for making it as good as it is. It is a truly brilliant format. Uh, and what I just want to end with, just so that everyone can see this online, is I do have some current... Um, current formats here so we're going to show you just on screen here this is where we're at currently you can take a screenshot of this in terms of the heats and the races that we know have happened so far so we've got the men here and if i show you there we've got the ladies and i see a certain emma on screen there as well making her way into the next rounds for the grand final so we've got all of that on screen um so you can take a screenshot remember this new format is very different the, the the race format is deliberately different but it is also fantastic um i think it's making for excellent viewing but thanks you so much folks it's been an absolute pleasure i hope to see you all somewhere on course at a park and more importantly back on the show next season thank you everybody take care keep trading and i will see everyone else for episode three of this series next week until then thank you very much and thank you for listening to the ninja sport podcast Thanks for listening to the Ninja Sport UK podcast. Remember, the next episode of Ninja Warrior UK Race for Glory is on Saturday, 5.30pm, ITV1 and on ITV Hub. If you like what UK OCR are doing, please consider supporting them on Patreon. Until then, thanks for listening and see you next week.